Welcome back to Black News Tonight. My next guest is one of the most successful and multi-talented artists in the entertainment industry today. Diallo Riddle is an Emmy and WGA nominated actor. He's a writer, showrunner, and if that wasn't enough, he's also a dope DJ. The ATL native is one of the creative forces behind the hit sitcom Southside, which has just premiered its second season on HBO Max. Take a look. Brother, what's your name? J-Mo? What are you, 47 years old? 29 years old. No! Uh, uh, you see what's happening here? Blacks are starting to crack. Major. Providing a realistic and diverse portrayal of Chicago's Inglewood area, Southside follows two friends who just graduated from community college. They work together on a rent-to-own business while trying to make their big dreams come true. To talk about the show and much more with me is the man himself, Diallo Riddle. Good to see you, my brother. First of all, congratulations on your brand new, spanking new, fresh second season. Second season, I don't take oh, nothing. I, I, say, I don't take you know, second season. This, this fantastic... I thought, I thought you were going to say this fantastic child's room that I'm I'm, I'm clearly zooming from. You know, I, <laughs> I should say that we're in the process. I mean, like I got the bunk beds. I was like, people are going to be like, is he at Howard University? No, this is my this is my kid's room. And uh, <laughs> I've been watching the show all night. This has been a spectacular episode, bro. And uh, you know, to anybody who wants to find out more about Nelson Mandela, listen, they'll get back to the serious stuff. I'm just here to provide a little bit of lightweight commentary about my uh, TV show on HBO Max. So that's that's what's that's what time it is. No, nah, man. Well, look, we do it all on Black News tonight. We do the serious. We do the light. And if that was that, I knew that wasn't a Howard University bunk bed because it got fresh paint. The bed is stable. <laughs> I <knew> <laughs> <laughs> Man, I saw some tents today. I was like, wait a second. I, I, okay, admittedly, I, I ain't been on any college campuses lately, but what's with the tents? I couldn't believe that. I'm, I'm so happy that they stood their ground and, and got, got, got some progress going. But that was a shock. I was like, wow. All right. Man. No, it was, it was, it was a shock to me. Man, I'm so proud of them for standing their ground and holding it down. Man, speaking of holding for it real. down... You're doing a second season of a show. I don't take for granted that you get a second season. Somebody who's been canceled <laughs> many, many times. <laughs> they be looking for a reason to like, cancel black I... shows. They're just like, they're just like, well, we Bruh. thought it was gonna be Cosby meets, you know, a different world in terms of the numbers. No, they're looking for reasons. But uh, no, I appreciate that, exactly, man. Yeah, man. It, it is. It feels great to get a second season of the show because we we worked so hard to bring an accurate. Um, and a funny um, portrayal of what it is to grow up on the South Side of Chicago. And I always say that, like, yes, this South Side takes place in Chicago, but it could be South Central in L.A. It could be Southwest in Atlanta. It could be South Bronx in New York. Like, our people like to live south of the city. So no matter what city or town you're from, we, we hope the South Side represents that. It's, it's an accurate portrayal by people who grew up in those communities. I grew up in Atlanta. Bashir, my writing partner, grew up in Chicago. And we just wanted to make it clear to people who aren't from these neighborhoods, no, it's not all death and violence. People don't just wake up every morning thinking like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to make it home today, mama. Like, that's not the kind of show that we wanted to do. We wanted to do a show that represented the neighborhoods and the communities that we come from, which are those wonderful Black communities all throughout America. Do you think there's a, a gap in, in, in the TV landscape for the, those types of representations? I mean, because now there's plenty of black shows. We always could use more. We could definitely use more yes. black showrunners, black producers, black... But but there seems to be a certain slice of black life and a certain way we represent black life that gets shown. What's missing from the landscape? Man, I think uh, just more voices, more diversity of thought. You know, like, you, you can do a show like uh, Insecure, which is based in L.A., and it represents, you know, Issa and what she's into, but you could do a show with Snoop, and that would be a very different show. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think that it's so important. Like, white people never walk around saying, wow, there are too many white shows. Like, they never say that. That never happens. They're just getting season eight. There was I was watching some show. It was like a bunch of white people. They were on season eight. I was like, that doesn't happen for our shows too often. So I think it's really important that we get more black voices out there to tell more stories. You, you can, I could do a show about Atlanta. It's not going to be like Real Housewives of Atlanta. It's not even going to be like Donald Glover's show, Atlanta. Like, we really have to go all out to uh, make sure that all of our different types of tastes and flavors get out there because uh, it's not going to be handed to us. Uh, we just got to take it. No, that's absolutely true, man. What should we expect from season two of Southside? Are there uh, any major changes in the storyline? Any, any surprises? No, man, I think we just made it bigger. I think we uh, we went out of our way to 
bring in, you know, more parts of the city. So, you know, even though we're still based in the Inglewood neighborhood of, of the South side, like we're getting out to Hyde Park, we're getting north to, you know, Lincoln Park, we're, we, we're investigating what it's like to delve into Chicago politics. We have, uh, we have a couple of guest stars this season, but I don't want people to think that we're just going to become like Saturday Night Live style, just like bringing in famous faces just so that people watch. Like these were fans of the show and almost all of them from Chicago. So whether it's Chance the Rapper, uh, the rapper Vic Mensa, uh, Dion Cole that a lot of people know from Stand Up and Blackish. Like, you know, we, we went out and brought in more of the people who are from Chicago who appreciated what a distinctly Chicago show that we were trying to to build here. You know, we still got Lil Rel who was on season one. I, I would say a lot of people have still not seen the first season of the show. So if this is your first time hearing about, oh, there's a show about, you know, Chicago that's not about like the police department or the, or the fire department. Um, yes, please watch our show because I think that you'll see that, um, you know, I think it's it's just funny. It's, it's laugh out loud funny. I know that sounds weird to say because I'm one of the writers on it, but that's what anybody who's seen the show will tell you. <laughs> I, I don't think it's the true. show has lost a fan. I, we believe strongly in it. No, it's, it's it's actually funny, and you know I, I can't I can't tell you how many people come on the show and I gotta laugh when the jokes ain't funny. It's the, the it's the it's the duty of a host, and I gotta pretend shows are good when they're yeah. not. You know what I mean? But this is actually a funny show. Uh, it's well written. It's got great guests, uh, and, and it really it really is something special, man. The, the, this idea of comedy, though. Why is it important for us to look at black life, even the tragic parts, through comedy? Because some people would say, "We don't black people need to stop laughing so much. We need to get serious," you know. But I'm not sure that that's the right approach. By the way, thanks, Dad. That's how my dad likes to talk. He's always like, "Black people always got to do comedy." <laughs> no, listen, it's, you know, it's true, man. <laughs> family, family issues coming out live tonight on Black News Tonight. No, seriously, this is what this is what it comes down to, man. It's like, uh, you know, I see a lot of black comedy, and I'm just like you. I got my own personal taste. Some of it, I think, is a little cartoonish and buffoonish. Uh, I like to say that our show is not corny, you know what I mean? And we're definitely not even making it, you know, with the hopes of hoping it translates over to an audience that doesn't look like us. You know, we really do make it for black people more than anybody else. I, I would say that like I came, I'm one of six from a big black family. Bashir is one of eight. You know, like we're used to sitting around that big black dinner table and, you know, basically having a make jokes just so that, you know, it's, it's like a competition thing. You get a bunch of black people around a table, we're going to try and see who's the funniest. You know what I'm saying? And like, uh, you know, his father was an imam and my father was a black revolutionary in 1960s post Watts riot, Los Angeles. So everything that we do is always going to have a little bit of that social commentary involved. I think that, you know, again, I'm trying to make my family laugh. We're educated. We, we, what a, we, you know, I, I just don't want to see the same, buffoonish jokes from like a 1973 episode of what's happening now. You know what I'm saying? I'm also not trying to have like death and violence on the TV when I want to laugh. You know what I mean? I think that we're going out of our way to do the show that we would like and that I, we think our families would like, but by extension, we think the community will love. Oh, I think you've absolutely done that. You've also created a space for yourselves in the business side of this, because y'all have been in the Hollywood business for a minute. Uh, in addition to Southside, you and Bashir Salahuddin, as you said, your, your co-writer, uh, starred in IFC's Sherman Showcase. Uh, you closed the multi-year yeah. deal with Warner Brothers TV. Uh, Y'all making some big moves. How does that happen? And what kind of creative space is that? I know th there's a financial piece of this, but I'm more interested in the creative space that it affords you. You know, it, I, I'm, I'm not going to tell you any lies right now. It, it's, it's give or take. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you will come up with an idea that you absolutely love and you'll bring it to executives. And unfortunately, most executives are still not black. Most of them are still white. Um, and you'll find yourself, oh no, I'm, I'm, I'm now I'm translating for them, trying to get them to understand why this is a good idea for a show instead of them just letting me, you know, do the show that I know our people will appreciate. Um, you know, so I'll put it like this. Netflix gave Kenya Barris a lot of money. Kenya Barris, the creator of Blackish. And a couple of years later, he left that deal. Why? Because he felt like even with his previous successes and the money that was involved, he wasn't creatively allowed to do what he wanted to do. I think it's so important in this day and age that there be more black executives and just some white executives who are willing to step out of the way and just be like, I trust that creative. I'm going to let that vision happen because that's the only way you get the best stuff. You know, that's the only way you're allowed to take the risks necessary to create something that's really worth watching. Because like you said, there are a million shows out there and there are quite a few black shows out there right now. 
Um, but are they all great? I don't think anybody would say that. You know, I think that to create something special, you really have to have the support of a really strong network or a streamer. And that's, you know, starting to get into the whole Netflix versus, you know, ISC of it all. But, you know, I will say one thing about ISC, AMC, and Sherman Showcase, our other TV show, is that I've never really gotten a note on that show. They've basically let us do on Sherman Showcase anything we've ever wanted to do. And that show, just for those of you who haven't seen it, it's basically like if that show 30 Rock, which you know kind of took place at a show like SNL, well, what if that uh, you know t- what if that show took place at Soul Train or or Solid Gold? You know, that's basically mm-hmm. you know Sherman is sort of like this mixture of Don Cornelius and um, and uh, who's the guy he used to represent all the boxers, uh, Don King. You know, like he's a, he's, he's a little King. bit yeah. he's a little bit shady, <laughs> he's a little bit shady, but you know he's. He's an interesting character. That's what I'd say. I'd say both of our shows got 100% on Rotten Tomatoes, so I would hope that people check them out. That you know, we put a lot of hard work yeah. and effort into them. Well, I can I can vouch for I can vouch for this one, and I take your word on the second one. I'm gonna watch that one this week too. I am really impressed by your talent, uh, your work ethic. I mean, this dude, by the way, he doesn't just run shows and and act and direct and all that stuff. He's also an active DJ. You know what I'm saying? Like, the brother <laughs> has extraordinary talents. He's wide-ranging. I don't know how he does it, um, but he managed to do it, and he manages to hang out inside of what might actually be a prison cell. I can't prove that it's not. Um, and so <laughs> no, man, we just, will... <laughs> like, kids used to have their posters up on the wall and stuff. We're in the process of moving to a new house, so the the, the Zoom room is not as, as, as cool as it used to be. But I, I just want to send a shout-out to you, bro, because I think this network does such good work uh, such a good source of information. And, uh, and seriously, mm. I'm not just saying I, I, sometimes we do these interviews, you have to sit here and watch a news show and you're like, what, where am I? This one, I was actually learning stuff and I felt <laughs> like, uh, I was, I was getting to see my people and I, and you're in Philadelphia where I think, um, your DA, uh, Larry Krasner, I feel like he's doing some good work. Larry Krasner. There, so, you know, yeah, man. Yeah, man. It's a blessing, man. I appreciate the love, man. We, we Again, we support each other. You'll be back on the show soon. Everybody, make sure you check out Diallo's work, all of his work, but especially the show, because you can catch it right now on HBO Max. You can catch up on all the old episodes and the new episodes of Southside.